Man! Oh my god, are we madding? Are we madding? Please, gods of magic. Gods of magic. Give me this one chance to melt. Please, I need it. I want to see it happen. Hello everyone, it's Love here and today a creature deck because you guys said in the comments that sometimes you like creature decks so we will try to keep it fresh for the for the today's video and this is nothing other than Mishra Crime by Gix together with the famous dragon engine and together they make a weird thing that makes opponent explode so that was of course one of the reasons for the deck I did not melt Mishra ever so far and I wanted to fix it but to be honest I need a fair warning to you guys i did my best i played for like two or three hours i don't know a lot of games in the end will be unranked because i just tried to went for the melt only this and i still couldn't get it in ranked games they scoop before you can do it and they can usually remove your dragon engine so when they expect the melt they just remove your combo so i couldn't make it i tried my best i know you wanted to see it i i just I have to make a video for today and I don't have any more time to try. So sorry for that, I did my best, but at least you know what's up, right? So you can decide whether you want to watch the game without the melt. And other of the deck, this is incredibly aggressive, very, very efficient deck that just kills your opponents very, very quickly. And Burn Down the House is absolutely amazing in this deck. Usually you think about this as a sweeper. You will see how you can make lethals or you can just use it with geeks to draw three cards with haste. So really really nice card, uh, you can use double modes so efficiently in this one. Other than this we are just playing incredibly aggressive one drops, we hit our opponent to the face and we burn him with the last uh, burn spells like Okiba, Kumano or just short that you know and their drawing cards. Don't forget Mishra is extremely, well the melt combo is not something you will uh, realistically use too much. Mishra with this passive that whenever you attack you gain uh, X life and you deal X damage this is such a big deal. The whole deck is a lot of small creatures that love attacking, so you usually get insane value out of this passive. And you can play Misha whenever you feel comfortable that they cannot remove it, so you instantly get the value. This is a really, really nice card for the deck. So for the results, uh, in ranked games, we won four of the games, we lost two of the games, so, you know, 70% win rate, but eh. But it's high mythic, it was like top four, 500, so pretty nice results overall. In unranked, I, I think we were winning like 80% of the games, something ridiculous. So really solid deck, you can definitely rank with it. And this is the deck, I don't want to make intro too long, you know how the deck works. So let's go into the games, and if you have appreciate trying to melt at least and don't forget to subscribe i would much rather melt but i will try to do it in the current standard someday it will happen we nearly did it in one of the games so we will see at least the first attempt and we nearly did it but nearly is not the same as doing it uh, let's go into the games thank you all right our hand is amazing as always because we are playing aggressive tech <laughs> i never get mana screws with them uh, maybe I shouldn't say it, but it's it's kind of funny. So one of the reason of the good things about playing aggro decks is also the fact that you have everything to do during every game. Like you have so many options, and you never feel bad just because you didn't draw your two drop or three drop. So that's one of the things that definitely helps. Uh, this will be probably a counter spell, right? So it won't be easy game. If that's Azorius control. Not sure if we can make it uh, in time. They are also on the play, so depopulate is a thing. If I play Fable, they have perfect depopulate board. Yeah, they basically kill this, they kill the underdog, and they kill this. March, alright, alright. This definitely means we are playing Fable. You know, the, the card that you play if you have red in the deck. <laughs> oh man, it's so funny. Fable is such a strong card. We don't have a lot of value though. That this guy is really good. He especially. The, you remember when I said that not don't play planes uh, unless you you have to just to not show that you have the populate mana. I actually paid attention to it and thought, well, maybe he doesn't have exactly planes into the populate. And I think he made it on purpose. So really, really well played, my friend. And we cycle those two. We don't need removal, and we have enough lands. Well, this is definitely better. 
Uh, with this we we at least make sure that we do something. Also next turn harvester uh, is an option and we can yeah it's fine. But as you can see he's at 18. If he gets refuge like memory deluge we are in some trouble. Alright so Alright alright I, I know what we have to do. This will be annoying for them to deal with. Let's just make sure we are choosing the right time. <laughs> Like, this is 3 damage already, and when he sweeps it, it's another 3 damage, so that's a lot already. And if you play Mishra, and he won't be able to counter or kill it, that's a big deal. Or you don't like to see it. Celestus is extremely threatening. This is one of the situations when I'm not exactly sure how to play. If he has counter spell or... You know what? It's fine. It's fine. Let's see the one of those two cards. We don't want to double spell. Huh. That's interesting. Is this the damper? Like if he wants to do something in response to attack, it will happen. All right. I didn't attack with Kiki Jiki. Man, I'm st I'm so bad at magic. Like, I wanted to avoid Damper, but, you know, uh, I need to tap out in order to do... So I just missed one damage because I'm a super dummy. Yeah, and he indeed has Damper. Also, this uh, is a token, so when... It, yeah, exactly, I wanted to avoid this. Uh, and for some reason I thought that's not how magic works. On the bright side... So... Oh, so it died. Okay, so I guess the token, copy also triggers this one ability. Calculated! <laughs> Everything calculated. Ooh, that's a big draw. He didn't have uh, anything to prevent this next last turn. He would counter Mishra if he could. <laughs> yeah, so not only he will get so much damage, but we also drain him out of life, and we also draw four cards if he doesn't have interaction. All right, guys, so we are going first. Our curve can be Probably perfect. So we should probably take it. Uh, I really like the aggressive start. Also, the Oki Barakoner right is so much damage. Like when you stack those things, they really, really do a lot. And our curve is honestly perfect so far. So even though uh, this can be removed if this is an Esper control, they can remove only one of those. Oh, oh, the top lands. I can feel the pain. I can absolutely feel the pain. Alright, so first of all we definitely attack, we see how it goes. We have very aggressive hand. Uh, this was the priority, I think it's White March, and they might exile one card just to remove the Tenacious Underdog. Uh, if, yeah, they won't exile two cards for the Dragon Engine, I think. I honestly think this is better. This, uh, like, they cannot sweep next turn because they don't play red, so no Brotherhood Sand. It means that we are guaranteed to hit next turn very, very hard, and they probably have one removal. Yeah, we can also get sure that at, you know, at the end of this, or after the sweeper, maybe. Not sure, we will see how they play. Wedding announcement, alright. So they are fully tapped out. That's actually really good, it also means that the shard that goes through. And that was the idea. And they are already at 13? How? How? Like, I know, it's Okibara Kone, right? If not this, oh my god, we are doing so much damage. Uh, so I expect... Oh, I made a mistake. I made a mistake. Uh, they will depopulate and I will cry in my corner. I will play something, but it was better to play this right now. So it goes to the graveyard and then follow up with Shorded. Alright, maybe we are more lucky. <laughs> I've... It's their main phase, right? Yeah, this is their main phase. So, I mean, we we attack. Also, if he plays a sweeper, we have Tenacious Underdog. But well, they will have one additional token, I guess. They are at 3. They cannot fare well next turn. What it means is that we can dig for land depending on what he does and then unearth and that will be 4 damage and Tenacious Underdog is 3 damage. Man, I derank like through 
300 places while sleeping. Alright, we're going first. Sure. Uh, we will play Takenuma. Our start is definitely incredibly explosive. And we need land and something like Misha or Geeks and we should be set. Alright, this is the land. Man, it's so it's so freaking amazing. Whenever I play any aggressive deck, I curve out like a boss every single turn. If I play control having those three lands, it's nearly impossible. Alright, enough sloppy rant about the land rules. Oh, my mana screws are talking through me. Alright, dragon, brush some fire. Cool. Talia. Well, Talia actually really hurts. Man, she actually hurts so much, I will remove her. That's a big deal because it uh, negates the perfect curve of Fable. It also means we cannot cycle the Tenacious Underdog next turn. So overall, really big difference. That was a really strong play for them. Even though it seems, you know, that we are playing creature deck, right? So he can start drawing next turn. I think this is the play. We shouldn't miss on land, right? We can also go to Nicious Underdog, but it's not a great deal. Removal is great here. Well, <laughs> so it happened. It did happen. But we have still really nice draws. So I think we just flew them under the Fable value. You know, the reason we play Fable. Uh, I wonder if he will block the Goblin. Goblin is so incredibly threatening. Alright. So that would be double block, right? This messes up our turn a little bit, but we get... Oh, okay, okay, okay. So he wants to trade everything. Ooh, me likey. I don't mind it. Man, I have Fable, I have three cards, you don't. I absolutely love it. Even though we, we could Inferno grasp this, save this, and make Tenacious Underdog, I think double Fable on empty board like, sure, I'm loving it. I'm a living commercial right now. <laughs> Alright, another goblin. And later we can start cycling stuff. We have so much cool stuff to do. Morel. Oh, I feel... Okay, I'm not saying I'm feeling bad because you know it's a lie. <laughs> I'm enjoying killing his creatures so much. Oh, no, 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 no. Let's not. Alright. What do we discard? I think this is the card because we can get the full value otherwise. And uh, this is perfect on this turn, I think. Like, I like it. It's a good creature. Oh, that's so good. Okay, that changes a lot of things. So right now, we definitely kill the, the dude. We can go up to three mana. Oh my god, you know what it means. You know what it means. And they scoop. How, ca how am I supposed to manage you guys if they keep scooping to me? Can I get can I see my rank, please? What's up with Arena? Thank you. Being on the draw, sure. Man, I just realized how much I bank on having Fable. Having Fable is such a big deal in this deck and probably in every deck. Like whenever you have this card, you know that your value will go through the roof. And if you don't have land to... Like, imagine this hand. It's so much weaker than this. All right, it's Talia. Talia is definitely a thing. It's so fortunate that we have Tenacious Underdog because it will get enhanced and suddenly Talia cannot trade anymore at all. At all. So it means he needs a better card, like a Siege better. <laughs> but he, he made a mistake in my opinion. He, he made this a prime target. So we will definitely kill it. And uh, do I want to attack him? Yeah, I do. In fact, I do. He doesn't have good trait. Uh, this is mono white. So all we need to do is put... A, we actually, I think, need to put the stop. Sure. You get... An, oh my god, stop with the dudes. Alright, we, we know the play. Pretty darn annoying. And we'll go into defensive after this turn, probably, because it's such a good play. This will be so strong. Especially Talia. With first strike, we cannot really go through. Alright, this is an interesting draw. So, I guess this is life with Talia now. It should be this one. 
It also will give us the treasure to cast Voltage Search for 4. That's a pretty big deal. We cannot attack anymore. After this insane turn, we cannot really attack. I hope no Brutal Qatars. Siege Veteran. Oh, oh no, not the 1-drop. The infinite value 1-drop. That's, that's really strong. We cannot really do anything around it. First Strike is a big deal. The problem is that we can kill stuff, but we need to kill so much stuff. <laughs> uh, I think I played the land. I like my lands. And I will definitely draw something like burn down the house, right? 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 Alright. So what can we do? If I kill the Talia with Inferno Grasp, I can actually... Yeah, I could cast the Fable then. But then they get the token. Alright, alright, alright. I want to attack with the Goblin so much. He will block it with Siege Veteran. You know what? It's not the worst. Oh, I, I just realized what I can do. You know, the, the thing I, I said last turn. It has to... Man, I need to remove all of those creatures. Each one of them. This is threatening. This is insanely threatening. And the one drop. The biggest threat of all. A one drop that draws you cards. I need to kill this one. Otherwise, they they just can do everything. Yeah, this will be a double removal turn. So, what we have to do is play this, target this, sacrifice an artifact. We deal four. First, this one, otherwise, he gets the sword. Well, I guess he won't because we have Kumano. I'm a dummy. It's still fine because the play will be the same. Unfortunately, now he knows he can block the goblin. Uh, that's the price we need to pay for Tally attacks. So. How can you play the game if your opponent just draws the one card that saves him? He needed exactly this. The Tenacious Underdog was the big big thing holding up us in the game. Oh my god, and we are dead, right? I cannot believe those guys. They just draw from the top. After you removed everything, they had zero cards. Easy. One mana removal, see an earth. So, can we do anything about this? We can block Talia and trade versus one veteran. And then we survive, so we do not attack. Well, we have Fable, that's something. We have burned down the house, and he's going all aggressive, of course. We can draw cards, so we want to Kiki Jiki probably. He will trade anyway. But you know what? Let's give him the chance to make a mistake. No, 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 no. Okay, okay. There is a solution to this madness. Because he wants to kill both the Goblin Shaman and Kiki Jiki. And now this is a hard choice. If I played one of them was Kumano, it's really obvious what to choose. Right now it, he can actually... Like there is a small chance he will miss or mess up. I mean, that's not the card that will win us the game. Mishra is way better. I'm not sure if it's good enough. Don't forget, he will put the counter, so this will actually be a 5-4. And this is a first sec, so it will kill Misha first. Oh my god. If he if he's not a dummy, I think we lost it. Yep, he knows exactly how his cards work. Oh, well, he stopped 100, so they actually read the cards. And yeah, that's a weird attack, but I'll take it. Well, that's actually not bad. If we draw something to get rid of Talia, like, you know, we have options right now. That's an interesting choice. We need to donate uh, one creature every single turn, which sucks. And he cannot attack anyway. I mean, that's a lot of power. It's not perfect, but it's it's a start, you know? Wow, that, that was the quickest attack on earth. Is this the Emperor? Am I getting Emperored and I will cry in my corner? No. I mean, that's not bad. Now Talia cannot go through Mishra as easily. And this is a really good draw. Not gonna lie, this is probably one of the best draws in the deck. So, what do we want to do? Probably force shorted for one turn. I could attack. 
but then he draws Brutal Qatar and I'm dead. And we know he will draw Brutal Qatar from the top. He's a good magic player, he knows how to top deck. And sure, that should be enough to just pressure them. Well... I mean, well... I guess it's his choice. Killing Talia is a big deal. Am I a dummy? I am a dummy, right? I'm the biggest dum dum ever. Man, I'm actually so bad at magic. I should not win this, but I will win this because I'm lucky. <laughs> uh, at least one. Yeah, good game, my friend. He 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 deserved the win. He he actually played better. But well, I'm happy I top decked the answers, you know. It also means he's basically forced to block because he will bet one. Oh, nice man! Like I, I feel nearly bad because actually we are top decking like a god since three turns, and he didn't top deck as well. Well, sometimes you take wins that you did not deserve, and it's fine. <laughs> and the price for the weirdest opening hand goes to this. <laughs> Is this even good? Like I don't have creatures. <laughs> I don't have creatures. I have no value after turn 3. Whatever, okay, whatever. We will draw a creature. We will draw a dragon engine and it will feel glorious. I hope. I'm having a really bad feeling about this game, guys. <laughs> um, maybe I should do it, even though I don't have creatures. Okay, I'm greedy. I wanted to wait until the creature, but it's probably a mistake. Uh, yeah, and next time we are going for the throat, of course. He will play something, it will be annoying. We drew this one turn too late. Uh, we could play this into this, but it's not a good deal. First, we, we want to rem start removing stuff. I want to make sure that I have value. This is scary, because this will be something with haste, probably chick or swift spear. Yeah, that was genius. That's basically all their creatures in the deck. <laughs> oh, and I still missed my prediction. That's fine, it has no haste. And let's wait. I, f I hope he will do some. Oh my god. I mean, sure. Let's do it like this then. This is the biggest damage so far. Uh, let's start playing those guys. They will help us stabilize and yeah. We could play triple spell, I guess. What are the creatures we want to remove? I don't know, man. I, this this game bamboozles me. I think we should prevent the maximum damage and Swift Spear will probably be a lot of damage. And you know what? Let's invest this one turn. Let's invest this one turn. There is also a chance that we draw a creature next turn. And then we can Kumano into creature or something like this. It's weird. I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying my best, but definitely this is not the hand I expected. And I got quite punished by not holding go for the throat, but we have a lot of value and we'll heal a little bit with this. I don't think the triggers really matter. So we can just start playing. It's it's a 2-2 creature, you know? So, oh, and I, I need to remove it right now. He might have another Stormseeker and then it will be a night time. That's not what you want. Like, switching to night time is always a big deal. Oh, that's a lot of damage. But fortunately, Okibara corner rates help a little bit. Do I think I have the emblem, right? All right. So after this turn, our board is pretty huge. I mean, this is definitely a thing. Also, this is a four three. So I think that for this reason, uh, so we will double block this, right? We need to push some damage because we are getting burned at some point in this game. We need to kill him before he draws it. And it might already be too late. Like, just for reference, three play with fires directly kills us on the spot. <laughs> Lightning strike, play with fire, kills us on the spot. We are really pressured to do something. Alright, so this is the only thing that will go through. We are blocking the rest and trading. And we can trade nicely because Harvester trades up, so we can go for the Swift Spear. And those guys. So he should attack with Phoenix Chick, that's basically it. 
It also gives him better blocking chance. I guess. Well, it's not really the same. Oh, smart. Smarty Panty. Nice choice. I mean, that's an anxious underdog. I could discard it. But if I don't draw anything, I look like a dummy. And I have the emblem, right? So I should probably play it. What we can do... Oh my god, do we really sacrifice the Harvester? <laughs> we can deal 8 damage. So, uh, if he has a burn spell, we need to kill the Cheek. If he doesn't have burn spell, we don't want to kill the Cheek. And that's a harsh one. If we attack with everything, it's what? 7, 9, 11 damage, and he's forced to trade the Swift Spear. But we are at 3. That's not great. We need to pressure. That's not a lot of damage. He can just take it, but we need to keep doing it. I think we uh, scrap the burn down the house at the end step. Well, it is what it is. Uh, am I super happy about this? Definitely not. We are dying to a lot of stuff very quickly and we cannot make lethal even next turn. Unless we draw something really good, but I don't think what it could be even. So I think we should be losing this one, but it's still not over. There are some options and it all depends what he has in the hand. Well, this is pretty good. Let's see the burn spell. The last card is all that matters, because so far we can trade very nicely. Oh my god, this will be a lot of damage wanted. But we trade. Guys, we trade. No! Oh my god, the Warfare. Does he know how, how his cards work, that he can attack free? He knows. And we do not have a choice. Uh, if we don't block like this, we die. And we won't be able to burn down the house next turn, so we need to draw something else. Like a land. <laughs> land is definitely amazing. Like, can I have one HP more, please? Just one more, please. I'm killing him. I just needed one more HP. <laughs> if I attacked, he would be at one. That was pretty masterful. To be honest, he exactly counted, so we cannot kill him with Underdog. Uh, like, we, if we play Underdog, we die, basically, right? Alright, opponent goes first, as usually. We don't have great opening hand, but it's decent. It's decent enough. Let's see how aggressive this Mono Red will get. Uh, honestly, those guys are actually pretty good. If we can play them every single turn, like, it should be fine. And at some point we can start doing cards with Geeks. And hopefully stabilize enough. Swift Spear. Definitely a strong one. But no ramping, so it can be played with fire. I think we don't... I don't want to pay myself with this matchup. I mean... It will get played with fire, right? No. Okay, so he doesn't have one mana instant. That's good to know. Also, even if he did, he misses one damage on the Swift Spear at least. Stronger. That's not what you want to play, really. It's, I don't think it's a good choice. It can work, you know, but play with fire is better. Alright, our first creature. Alright, and that's a payment. Do we go with this? Yeah, I think so. It's a pretty decent card. Even though we don't get the full value, he needs a exactly lightning strike to kill it. Let's see if he just drew it last turn. He, I think he did. Oh my god, he still misses the damage, so that's something, he's down to 3 cards, but I did not expect that he drew it, he didn't have, May okay, so he didn't have 1 mana instant, maybe he had it before, maybe I'm a dumb dumb, so let's trade for free, like, if he attacks like this, he will burn us, and 3 damage is not the biggest deal, I would love to not get Painlands, but here we are, here we are. I think we need to hit Misha, finally. It's really hard for them to kill. And let's start gaining some extra life. Like, we need Misha, 
And the problem is that we probably have to block so they can burn it. But it is what it is. So let's eat some damage, but we still trade for Swift Spear and Lightning Strike. So it's still a lot of damage prevented, basically. And you know what? I knew it would be a next Mishra. Absolutely. <laughs> Do I want to pain myself? I will definitely play another Misha. I think we should. Like we offset. So this is a short term play, but I think we need a short term play. If we can get creature one turn faster, that's such a big deal. Man, Misha can heal you so much. I like the art on this one. And Misha is super cool. Not as much as Urza, but he's freaking cool. Alright, we are going first with incredibly aggressive mono black hand. So you always have to see. Man, you always, when you start playing some cards for a longer time, you have this feeling whether you like the card and you feel good about playing it or you don't. And with Okibari Connor, right? Man, I have a good feelings. Like it feels pretty darn good overall. Uh, I mean, let's, let's roll the dice. Maybe we can draw a creature next turn. I don't think just waiting for it is a good strategy. Like, if we draw something, we want to play it. If we don't, we will play it next turn, so we don't really gain anything. And here's the answer. And don't forget, this transforms into creature, but it's not casted, so we don't get the value. Unfortunately, our card is pretty garbage right now. So, sure, that is basically the big thing we have going for us. Uh, we trade here. If we trade here, he will use an instant burn spell and hit our face and we basically donate creature for free. We will do it later. <laughs> and we got a free block because he misplayed. There was no reason to give us this opportunity to get rid of two damage. But they did. They always did. We are at 17. Yeah, okay, so here is the combo. Another combo. And they just used a burn spell. They won't like the fact that we have shorted and now they basically need 4 mana or 3 mana and double burn. That's the only thing that will save them. They cannot go for shorted. And those dummies think that we will care. So he will burn one of them and trade for the other one. So maybe it wasn't the best trade. Yeah, I, that was a mistake. I don't think we gain anything out of double blocking. If they had the burn spell, they would kill both. So we might as well attack, block with one and go here for the second one. So we won, but that was a big mistake. Day 54 of trying to melt Misha. <laughs> Is it possible? Is it possible? So next turn, whatever we play will get countered. But you know what? Uh, Commander is still a creature. So we prefer to make... Like, we can gamble and we can win. There is a chance they won't counter the next play. And we still get a 2-2, so Okiba is not much better here. Alright, they definitely have something, but it's an instant. There's no spell on the stack, there are no creatures, so it's not Fading Hope, not Counter Spell. It's probably Consider. And I mean... They don't play Syncopate anymore. So if that's make disappear, we want this one countered. Yeah, so we want it in the graveyard. Next turn it might be Dissipate, and Dissipate is much more threatening to Underdog. And we want uh, Dissipate to hit this one, though. Alright. So, we won't do anything with Haste, we might as well pretend that this is our only play. And always, when you do things like this, it is beneficial to not play around, because your opponent might think you are, get, you are stuck at 2. It means that he's so incentivized to just clear this creature because you probably cannot play more. And then you go, haha, and you're happy. We don't care about the second underdog, we won't get to 8 mana this game probably. Like we might, but you, you get the idea. It's not a biggest deal. Uruk High. <laughs> well, I mean, you know who plays Mono Blue now. <laughs> I'm sure this was an ex Boros player, but I still respect, you know, the tribute. No, don't fading hope it, you monster. But you can see he's down to three cards as a control deck. So right now he needs first for discovery. He needs to refill very quickly, or maybe Jin just to keep blocking. But we can remove Jin. Not sure if he will know about it. 
We cannot make double play, so what we have to do is just attack. And another added benefit of not playing land before the combat phase, now he thinks that we will go to 4 mana, so now he might keep up the mana. And now we show, no, we got mana screwed. <laughs> so, you know, you increase the misinformation your opponent has, and that's always something that you really, li really, really like. The less information he has, the worse decisions he can make. And very, very good players will make educated guesses uh, based on the signals you are giving them. Even though they aren't sure, it's, you know, more in this direction than in the other one. And when you can manipulate it, it's so good. I mean, that's a lot of underdogs, right? Let's play land. And as I said, that you have to do those things. <laughs> like, I'm not doing them. <laughs> Uh, I could play Geeks and draw a card at the cost of one thingy. It doesn't seem really good. This is our big turn. We need to make it count. What's up? <laughs> they didn't have anything! I did not expect they have nothing. Not even a... Okay, counter spell I guess wouldn't be visible anyway. Uh, get wrecked, son. <laughs> <laughs> they know. Uh, I, I guess they had no other choice but to play Jin and roll the dice and they unfortunately for them lost. This is the game. We are going first. We have Dragon Engine. We have Misha. Please, please, the gods of magic. We need this. I want you guys to have Misha's melding. I want it so much. Orzov, definitely color combination that will make our creatures suffer. <laughs> Let's see. I hope he will play a lot of creatures. I mean, we have to do it. It will it will die the same there. But they play usually go for the throat, the same as we are. So there is a chance they cannot remove their artifact. Oh no. Don't be this guy. Don't kill my cool stuff. I hope he taps out fully. Because then we can use cut down on the next turn. No, don't. Yeah, it, it dies to cut down. <laughs> uh, definitely not a great trade for us so far. But we have decent cards. I will take Fable and Day of the Month. It can be destroyed by Qatar Commando, but it's still one for one. Enjoy. Like, I got the Goblin and you have empty board, so that's all I needed. It is two for one. Even if he answers it this way, it's still two for one. Edgar. Interesting. That's that's actually a really interesting one. Uh, he doesn't play artifacts, I think, but generally this is just a better way to remove things. I mean, I will stack some mana. So I don't want to use those things if I don't have to. Next turn we can start playing Misha and stuff, and Misha will actually be a 4-6. Uh, Cutdown won't hit it. Uh, little thingies will be super annoying. We might have to keep up the remover. Oh my god. That's some serious power. Alright, it's fine. It's fine though. Alright, so how do we do it? Yeah, pretty obvious. It has to be done this way. He stopped out, so that makes... Uh... Okay, I, I, I'm pretty stupid, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. I will I will make the play, but I don't know why I thought that I have mana for it. So we will burn a little bit, but we get the treasure, we get some extra tempo that well, we basically out tempo and we have two turns before the strips. I actually will take it, that's really good. We he should take the, the face damage because in two turns this will be a 2-2, so he gets more value ba back then and he cannot kill uh, the goblin anyway. Even this turn with two tokens, he could threaten the goblin. It would be probably already better. Man, oh my god, are we melding? Are we melding? Please, gods of magic. Gods of magic. Give me this one chance to melt. Please, I need it. I want to see it happen. Uh, do I? Yeah, sure, whatever. Sure, just go quick. We need to we need to do it before he scoops. Smork. Treasure token, sure. Mishra, the ultimate bro. <laughs> well not sure if Urza isn't a bigger bro, but I, I don't know. I always like Mishra. No you you are a monster. You know that you are a monster. 
you are no fun. You should play blue control. <laughs> Here, I said it. I said it. I'm aware. Alright, so that's a lot of damage. It's it's still a very sad day for us. And given we have no Valiant, we want to make sure that our next underdog is a bit bigger. Like, we can still burn him, but he's a moral like villain in this game. We could make it work. This was as close as we got. So, guys, it, it might be the only game where we were close to, you know, doing the thing. Oh, it feels bad. I really wanted to melt it. And it was so close. I could almost taste it. I probably should read what the card does, but let's be honest, we, we are not using it anymore. And that will be a huge buff and a lot of lifelink. Yeah. Well, that's a lot of damage out of nowhere. And lifelinkers, and yeah, we definitely need something better than this. So I have to underdog, right? I need my cardies. So how do we do it? It's probably this and this. He will double block the Misha and what done. Then I'm set, right? I'm definitely set. <laughs> so we we just go like this, I guess. It's not the biggest deal, but we cannot go for Lethal with Lifelink, so we need to do it like this. And at least we get some extra cards during our turn. Extra cards seems pretty fine. Uh, he has no blue, he cannot interact with our stuff. So we will kill adversary, block with Misha, and we basically clear the board, so those three cards is all that matters, because on board he's losing super hard. Oh, super hard, it also means that at the upkeep, what is the creature? Qatar Commando. Can you stop with the lifelink, please? I, I don't enjoy amount of lifelink that you are having right now. I would grab my Edgar, but it's still really, really good. Qatar Commando is interesting, but this one toughness, man. Uh, it trades really bad against even like Voltar and like, Epicure or something. He saw the trigger. <laughs> no! Stop it! Why are you. Why do you know how to play magic? He knows. Oh, he's, he knows so well. <laughs> anyway, still. We will play this and we'll be able to play our, our hand. It is a little bit of damage, but you know, it is what it is. Have you seen a marvelous Mishra attack? Like, it feels pretty good to me. That's five damage and five life drain. I love it. It, it would attack anyway, so you know, it is what it is. Uh, let's see the blocks. I think he expects the removal, so that, suck that, that, that sucks. A little bit, Le but let's see the blocks, because I'm not sure how it goes. All right, perfect. Bro, what's up? <laughs> uh, it seems that in the end he didn't expect it. Like he played around it last turn, but he didn't play around it this turn. So right now it looks much worse, doesn't it? it it's so sweet to have all of those buffs and suddenly your board is empty we even got the extraction specialist minion basically and we can still play Antonius Underdog for the next turn pretty darn sweet i think we should win this unless he has insa insane cards don't forget this is also they might as well play farewell and clear the board with graveyard and we are a sad panda because we have a land in the hand but their deck is absolutely not built around having a sweeper <laughs> I mean, sure. Uh, as long as it's not farewell, we actually don't care. We have double Tenacious Underdog. And he has one card, so in two turns we'll overwhelm him so much. Or, you know, just play Shadow Death. I guess it works as well. I'm playing this one first. Uh, because if he has removal, there is high chance that he might use it. Especially if it's like White March or something. Alright, what about the Shelly? Shelly, bro? And that's a Qatar commander. He didn't want to trade, smart. But this means we got extra HP and we got back what we paid for Tenacious Underdog. Soon we'll be able to triple Tenacious Underdog. And the explosion is coming in 3, 2... Okay, with this draw there is no explosion, that's for sure. But we should still win the game, I think. Like, our value is pretty, pretty big. <laughs> Over. <laughs> Like, we can just keep attacking. 
and he needs to kill somehow sure that we get all the life that we lose from the tenacious underdogs and his AO does not die and we get such high card advantage that in two turns will be unstoppable and he still needs to lose life every single turn for drawing cards so we know uh, it should be lethal faster than he thinks like next turn we can, you can attack with three creatures and he has only land sure i hope five damage was worth it my friend because you are in for some nasty 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 damage that, that sounded kind of funny. So he can block, sure. The problem is that he's at one right now. And we can follow up with Harvester even. Man, this is so many cards. And next time we attack with four creatures. He can draw removal, but he'll be at one and will triple attack. So even if he gets everything he wants, I think Farewell is the only card that saves him. And I'm not sure if he's playing it in the deck. He generally shouldn't with this kind of build. But if he plays the Sweeper, maybe Farewell as well. So you never know, you never know. In Orzo, definitely a really good card in every kind of deck, I guess. Yep, and that's that's two two little blockers, and well, I guess he can hit multiples, right? He doesn't play Dynic, but maybe he has something with cheap lifelink, like extraction specialty. So let's see the draw. There are some scenarios when he can draw good enough, maybe to offset all the damage. We are on our way to twelve, by the way, just to triple underdog every single turn. Oh, uh, okay, this is pretty sweet. He can pump a little bit. And when the creatures will die, we will lose some life. That's something to consider. See a nerd? <laughs> oh, that was the most crafty lethal of the day, that's for sure. Is this the game? You are going first. Sure, I will go first. I actually do enjoy going first every single game. So we can make a deal, Magic. Like Arena, I will go first and you will be a best game ever. Is that a deal? Alright, so we will follow up with Geeks probably. And that's... That's Golgari so far. Man, I love Golgari. I want to make the deck so much. This is usually a reanimation target. So they probably play the Grave Digger thing that reanimates stuff. So we need to be prepared. It will be a quick game, possibly. Oh, it's so lame. I want to kill it. Yeah, it doesn't really provide any value, so he will just trade. Well, it is what it is. We have a very good curve so far. So we are on the play with pretty much perfect curve, right? I need to acknowledge it, because I'm always complaining on my opponent having it, and I need to be fair. Yeah. The problem is that if you remove this one, you are not removing the next one. They don't really have Cardo. So I think we, Misha is better this turn and this will get probably removed. And it has instant effect so I get some extra damage and I force him to remove it. When they remove it, the real threat, Charlotte, will come into battlefield and hopefully dominate everything. Oh, he, he cannot even remove Misha. That's so sad. We could Vortex search it. I know you guys want bigger short. <laughs> it's fun, isn't it? Uh, this will be Vortex search. I think he will scoop after this turn. He's so behind. He's actually so behind after this turn. He needed to remove Misha. That's the problem with Golgari or whatever this is. It can be more colors, but so far we didn't see anything except Golgari. I think it's Reanimator. Yeah, this is what he needed last turn, and now the show that will come, and this will be a real check whether he has a removal. And this is pretty bad draw. We'll keep it for Fable. And that would be a mistake. Painlands just saved me. Okay, no removal. Checked. And that's a 5 6 show that. Have fun. <laughs> Oh, well, sure, that's so that When you cannot remove this card, you are so out of the game. Especially 22 to 3. It gives us so much time. Uh, we can choose, right? I will sacrifice. 
that's the creature. This is the creature I, I would love to sacrifice. And that's my underdog. <laughs> uh, thanks to the counter, we can also actually attack him and force him to give, a, give it up. Otherwise, he could just trade and he would get extra turn. But we have Tenacious Underdog, so we would just kill him on board.